The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Lorraine Underwood and this week we're going to be making a seven segment RGB LED clock from my workshop. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. But first, let me show you around the workshop. So my workshop is in the basement of my house. So that's the kitchen just right above us. So that's why you can hear the washer and the dryer sometimes. That's a spare room. It's quite lo low height, so we don't use it very often. Very lucky to have an external door that goes outside and a window so we get some daylight. Can you guess what time of the year I recorded this at? Right in front of the stairs is my desk and let me show you the workbenches over here. So this is where most of our equipment is. We've got a 3D printer, vinyl cutter, a miller, there's a soldering station down that end of the workbench and a normal paper printer. Then we've got kind of tools hanging up, easy to reach. My baby, the laser cutter, that's a very cool Raspberry Pi pinout poster that we like. And these are all the kind of t uh, materials for the laser cutter, so all the wood and acrylic. So looking at my workshop then, what is missing? Yes, it's a clock. <laughs> so we, are, we do have daylight down here, so don't lose track of time completely in the basement. But sometimes I'm over at the soldering station and I haven't got my computer on in front of me and I haven't got a watch and I just can lose complete track of time. So I really want a clock here and I want it to be big and colourful and lit up. So you know what I mean by seven segments? It's kind of the old calculator clocks. So you draw seven lines, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you light up different sections depending on what time it is. So if it's uh, 1 a.m. we go for these two numbers and then the rest would be just zero, so like that. So I'm gonna create four of these to be able to show the full time in hours and minutes. There's been a few clocks on the Element 14 community recently. There's one that is purely just a color clock. So it's different color depending on this time of day, which I love that idea. And another one um, shows the different time and the different time zones, which again is um, really useful for me for dealing with people around the world. So I kind of wanted to combine those with another clock that I saw, not on the Element 14 community. So I saw it on a YouTube channel belonging to YouTuber Engineerish. Um, don't know his real name. I'll leave the link in the description, but his seven segment clock was, each number was that big and that's what I'm going to build. I'm actually going to use his design files and 3D print four of his seven segment clock numbers and combine them together. Throughout this video I'll explain why I chose to use his design files rather than making it from scratch myself. I have a feeling that I am going to have to adapt his build for my situation, so it won't be a complete copy of his project. Of course I'm going to put my own unique spin on this project. The whole clock is 3D printed, so I'm going to start printing the base in different colours. So here's all the bases printed out. This took so long because I had to keep changing the filament. Um, you can see I've started to kind of add the LEDs um, to the blue. Next, I still need a lot more printing. So I have to print these connectors that go up behind here and connect all the wires together really nicely like that. Um, I also need to print all the white. So this is the lid and this goes on top of here so it slots in really nicely onto the base. Um, but I want to do a test first because I'm not sure how bright this is going to shine true using just three neopixels at five volts. So I want to do a test on the wall because let me show you the problem we have down here in the basement. Let me show you how bright it is in here. So this is the doorway. It's probably the darkest bit of the basement. You can see the LED panels. So I've got nine really long ones in the main part of the room and three squares, one in the laser cutter and two here by the doorway. 
So I'm going to turn off the light and then turn it back on again to show you the brightness of the room. Ah! <laughs> so see how the camera has to adjust to the brightness and it's gone too far, I'm too dark. <laughs> Um, that's what it's like when you turn the lights on down here. It's really, really bright. It's brighter than the rest of the house. So when you go up to the rest of the house, it feels like the house is in darkness. And this is going to cause a problem with anything that's lit up that we have to try and read. Let's see what we can do about that and the clock. So I just stuck up a micro bit here, uh, connected to some neopixels to see what it would look like in place. So kind of up there. This is zooming out to where I'm actually sitting. So this is my view of this corner. You can see it's not very visible. However, that wasn't five volts. So I wired up five volts and it's a lot better. Blue still not quite that visible, but definitely better. So I'm just going to try out different materials on top of some lights. So this is white polypropylene. It's really easy to cut by hand. Here's some clear one, which is um, no good whatsoever. The white also wasn't uh, very good either. Here is some foggy acrylic. And I think this could be my best bet. Next up, um, I just got some tissue paper. Um, it looks okay, but then when you kind of flatten it, it doesn't. Another real potential here is card. So I just cut some card and folded it into the shape of a lid, but it's still quite dim. Um, even when I get it closer to the light, the card really soaks up the light. The next best option next to the acrylic, I think is paper, just plain paper. Like tissue paper, it takes a lot of the light away. So I'm gonna go with the foggy acrylic. I think it's actually called frosty acrylic. <laughs> here it is here. Um, so I'm gonna have to create some sort of cage to hold the acrylic on top of the lid because I'm gonna laser cut the acrylic so I can't laser cut it in 3D. It's gonna be a flat sheet. Here's the old lid. So let me show you what I did in Tinkercad. I took off the bottom bit and I also shrunk the bits at the top so I only have side slats to worry about. And here it is 3D printed. So I'm going to pop it in the green so you can see it a bit better, but it just fits really nicely inside the base like that. And then these bits stick up. So our acrylic will slot into here. Let me show you, you've got some acrylic that I've just cut. Oh, who loves that noise? <laughs> I love when things just come together like that. Um, I need to burn it a bit less on the slots because I've got burn marks here on my acrylic. I also took off the protective film, but yee, that's staying on. That's not going anywhere. And let's see what that looks lit up. Here we go. So you still got three kind of dots. It's not as diffused as I'd like it, but I think this is our best bet. You know, paper just drains too much of the color. Everything else just doesn't work. And I think this is going to be really visible as a full size number. I'm going to do a blue completely, so I'm going to print more walls, cut more of this acrylic and solder on the rest of these lights and then just put up this blue number on the wall and light it up and see what it looks like. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. So this looks perfect on the wall. I'm really happy with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the other numbers. Wiring then. So some of the connectors are three connectors. Most of them are two. I'm just going to cut enough wires to go through all the twos. That's 16 sets of wires to go from kind of here to here. So 
So here's how I assemble one of the seven segments. So I need to file down the holes because the connectors don't quite fit inside them. Unless you have thumbs of steel, I just couldn't get them in without filing them down. And then you thread the connector in. The three connector, they are different to each other. Um, so I just had to be careful to make sure I'd got the right one in the right place. So I'm assembling this as it would be laying flat. While you watch this very hypnotic video of me, I thought I'd chat about why I didn't create these design files from scratch. So I used engineers is <laughs> files from Tingiverse that he um, publicly allowed people to download and create their own seven segments. And the reason I used those files rather than creating them myself is I didn't want to reinvent the reel. You know, this project looks great. It looks exactly what I was looking for. I need, needed to make some adaptions, but why create work for yourself? Also, the main reason is that I'm actually not very good at designing files for 3D printing. This is the first thing I've actually designed. I've never designed anything from scratch. So I took his lid and I took the bottom out of it and I adapted it. And I felt very proud of that. You know, I, I learned that skill and I couldn't have done that without his skills to begin with. So I feel like I've been taught inadvertently by this person. And I think it's a skill that's kind of overlooked. It's a way of learning that's overlooked a lot. You know, put it simply, children don't learn to write until they learn to read. And it's something I kind of think applies to a lot of skills in the maker world, including coding. You, you shouldn't be typing code from scratch. You shouldn't be typing on a blank page. You should be adapting code, fixing code. You should be reading code before you write code. And I feel like that should be the same with a lot of maker skills like 3D printing, laser cutting. You could take someone else's files and adapt it rather than trying and failing to design your own. I think this is a really good way of learning. However, one problem with using other people's files is that you might not adapt them enough for your project. So there are no mounting holes on these seven second displays. So I'm, I need to mount these onto the wall. So I'm going to drill holes in the 3D print, <laughs> um, just on the kind of three middle uh, numbers, I think. Then I'm going to mount it on a board. So there's gonna be wires going between each number because it's gonna be controlled by one power source and one microcontroller. But I don't want to see the wires. So I'm gonna to have to have some sort of backing board. So what I've done is I've drilled holes in the board so the wires will be invisible between the numbers. So I can show you this uh, one here. So that's going to, this wire is gonna go under here and out the side and connect to the microcontroller. And you can see green's wire here. It's going under here and out to orange. So everything will be connected. The whole grid will be connected. Um, so I'm gonna do all of that. So I'm gonna trim these wires, solder them on, and then connect this to a microcontroller and test the whole thing as one object um, and see what it looks like. I have to say, I am loving the colors on this project. Um, wait until you see it on the wall where the background rainbow is going to join the wall rainbow and it's gonna look really cool. This is so close to being finished, but I don't want to rush ahead with the code. I want to get this up and running and then think carefully about how it's going to work. Of course, it's gonna be a real-time clock, so it's gonna show the time, but it has lots of potential to be something else, something more than that. And I wanna re really spend some time thinking about that before I dedicate time to it. Here's the final display on the wall. It looks amazing. Let me show you up close. So that's the wall and that's the board and it just kind of blends really nicely. Um, nothing technical about that, I just really like it. Some of the lids had to be glued on to the numbers, but I've kind of, I didn't want to glue them all down because it's kind of cool to show people what's underneath. So there's one of the segments that's also been screwed down. I 
I am so happy with this build. This is one of the best builds I've ever made. It's colourful, it's functional, I can see it from a distance and it's got so much potential to do more. I haven't gone through any of the software with you. Um, right now it's just running off a micro bit, um, badly patched up around the corner. But that's what's going to, I'm going to go through that in video two. So there's going to be a second video on the seven segment display. I'm going to get some hooks and take it off the wall and then use it as a stopwatch. So I might have some voice control, some noise, uh, some buttons obviously. So there'll be further more to this build. Um, but I need to decide what board I'm going to use. So on the Element 14 community, I'll set up a discussion board and a poll. And I'd love to hear your advice on what board, electronic board I should use to control this seven segment display. I have to decide what I want the display to do. Do I want it to connect to my calendar and flash if I've got a meeting coming up? Um, I definitely want it to connect to like um, the international date time so I can quickly see what time it is in Chicago. Um, well, what else? What would you do with a seven segment display? Tell us, let us know at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. I can't wait to show you more of this build and I can't wait to hear your ideas about it too. See you next time. Is it gone to five? No! <laughs> I'm just gonna wait. <laughs> yes! <laughs>